the chefs have gone out of their way to demonstrate how the money we raise each year through fundraising changes lives here in the UK. I went along to the Living Memory Association, a little project in Edinburgh. Some inspirational people, you know. They're the sort of people you want to be cooking for at the banquet, right? Definitely. The Living Memory Association Mark visited is one of over 15,000 groups supported by Comic Relief. Based in Edinburgh, it encourages the elderly to remain active in their community through sharing their memories of the past. We've uh, worked with lots of community groups, lots of care homes, people telling us their own wee stories about their lives. <laughs> it's quite therapeutic. Inspired by his childhood memories, Mark wanted to evoke a real sense of nostalgia with the final dish on his menu. As a kid, I would always love walking about, almost making myself feel sick with a big lollipop stick with loads of candy floss on it. My dessert for this year, I've really sort of focused on the whole flavour element of it, the fun element of eating the dish. It's all, you know, childhood memories. It will bring a smile to your face. And it was these childhood memories that Mark wanted to share with the elderly people at the Memory Project. Everyone's been to a fairground, you know, you've had candy floss, and hopefully that will sort of take you back and, and it'll evoke those sort of memories for you. Cobwebs are appearing. So who would like to try the candy floss first? <coughs> George. George. You, George, you should try yeah. it first. George, there you are. It's nice and sweet. <laughs> mm. Lovely and boring, isn't it? I know, it's so I've forgotten that. You have to soak your fingers to get all this, the juice back off. <laughs> it would be a summer evening if you were at the fair. Yes. Yes. And that would be part Big of it. Big treat to go to a fair. And you would hear the music all around you as you were eating it. I remember a candy floss stall in a big sports field and the rain started to come on, totally dissolving all this <laughs> pink froth. Oh, oh, <laughs> I mean, we used to be able to buy it and it was about pink blue and white. And you were convinced as a kid it tasted completely different. <laughs> but really, it all tastes exactly the same. You know what they say? A moment on the lips and a lifetime on the hips. That's what they, and, and I think that especially applies to something like candy floss. <laughs> Inspired by George, Ruby and Jean's memories, Mark decided to host an afternoon tea at his restaurant to raise some much-needed funds for comic relief and to get some valuable feedback on his dessert. So, guys, make sure you dig deep. That is for charity, and I hope you all enjoy the dessert. Today's been a great day. We've raised loads of money for Comic Relief. Um, had some great feedback from a dessert. So, Tony, Michael, watch out. I'm going to be at the banquet. Back in the kitchen, Mark is spinning the candy floss for his cutting-edge chocolate dessert. And that's not going to disintegrate. I'm going to dehydrate it. So you're going to dry that so it's really crispy. I'm going to put another mat on top, yeah. and then roll it. So it's really thin, and then it'll, it'll almost look like paper. Yeah. And then cut it into a shape. Mark is making too much work out of candy floss. He's rolling it, he's drying it, and he's making it into wafer-thin paper. He could be doing too much work for something that may not add anything to the dish. Across the kitchen, Tony is also taking a risk with his slapstick-inspired custard pie and delicate sugar red nose. He's working on his pulled sugar, a complex process of boiling, setting and remelting his dyed glucose and isomalt mixture before it's ready for the next stage. It's not quite tricky in this temperature. Very. That's what's fine. It's hard. As it cools, Tony must work quickly, repeatedly kneading and folding the hot sugar until shiny and flexible enough to pull. Braver man than I am, Tony, I tell you. Braver man than I am. All we can it's do not is brave. try. He's just an absolute nutter. Yeah. Well, we know that. Aye, what was that Angela said? He's as mad as a box of frogs. Never a truer word said. More like a lorry load, mate. Michael is hoping to finish on a high with his tropical dessert, featuring donuts, jelly, and a pina colada. But risk taker Tony spotted a chink in his opponent's armour. So Angela's a donut fiend. She's expecting the best. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and Jalex Stoner, so he's got a high benchmark. It's going to be hard for Michael. Bit of pressure on you. Mark Stish is first under fire today, and he has a lot of elements to plate up. He drizzles white chocolate over his frozen chocolate cookies and sandwiches together with kumquat puree. He pipes more puree onto the plate along with salted caramel. He adds a line of caramelized chocolate puffed rice and popping candy and ties his tricky chocolate jelly knots before adding to the plate with the white chocolate soil. He finishes with his frozen cookies and a cylinder of creme fraiche parfait. But with so many elements to plate, he's forgotten a key component of his dish, the dehydrated candy floss. So, that's my not chocolate tart. Right, let's go. Bon appétit. One thing, candy floss, where is it? I forgot to put it on, just in such a, you know, time constraint. Where's the fun side in it? I think the whole fun is the eating of it, the presentation of it, the look of it. You know, it's just fun. He's not put the candy floss on it. He's not forgotten, has he? I think he has. There's a lot going on in the plate, Mark. Do you think that's, too, that's going to be too confusing? No, that's the fun part of it. Each mouthful should be different. And balance, you don't think that's too sweet? No, I don't. I think we've got the bitterness of the chocolate, the orange. Well, let's try the knot. That's the Scottish chocolate. Do you think it's slightly over, nah, over set? Yeah. I like the salted caramel. I like the popping candy as well. Mm. That's nice. Very nice. I've got popping candy in mine, so I'm a bit concerned there. Ah. Do you think that's going to take you through to the judges' chamber tomorrow? I think it deserves to. Fantastic restaurant dish, fantastic pastry work, but has no attachment to the brief for me. No. You want a big impact. Yeah. You want the showstopper, don't you? Yeah, you want something funny right then. Really happy with what I've done. Forgot one of the elements on my dish, but, you know, these things happen. 